now we'll uh, talk about the organizational culture. <coughs> uh, every organization has their own culture, and uh, this is what um, <coughs> it's kind of defines who they are and what they believe in. So it's a, it's a system of shared norms, beliefs, values, assumptions that bind people together and create shared meaning. It's meanings. So it's a common understanding of how we do things in this place. And uh, when people understand that, they have a common understanding of that, then they expect certain behaviors from others in the organization, other fellow managers or fellow workers <coughs> in the organization. So you could say it's the personality of the organization, and it provides a sense of identity to its members. It legitimizes the management system of the organization, why we do things the way we do things. And it clarifies and reinforces standards of behavior. Uh, there's um, a scale that has to do with the uh, dimensions of defining the organizational culture. And this is found, let me see. This is um, <coughs> in the book, it's on figure, and for in addition, six is in figure 3.5 on page 83. Okay. And on page 82 of the book, they talk about what are these uh, key dimensions. Uh, so, I just referred to this. If you have uh, the member's identity, they may uh, identify themselves with the job that they do, or they may identify themselves with the organization. Uh, team emphasis is the degree in which the work activities are organized um, <coughs> by groups or individuals. And uh, the management focus is the degree in which the management decisions uh, focus around uh, the effects on the people or the effects on the task. Uh, unit integration, whether it's more important um, for the unit to operate interdependent with other, uh, with the whole organization, with other units, or independently. Uh, the control has to do with whether there's uh, tight management control, or the, if there's more loose management control that you can decide how you work and what you do. A risk tolerance, does the organization accept high risk, or are they uh, uh, against risk? So you can only do things that are uh, well-defined and expected. And <coughs> reward criteria, do they, does the organization reward according to performance? individual performance or other criteria. <coughs> Conflict tolerance, uh, is uh, do they um, accept, does the organization accept questions on the status quo or if something is right or wrong, or do they not tolerate uh, this, this conflict and that you always have to do what the management says. Um, mean to end orientation, or are they more interested in the process of how you do it or in the results that come out of it? And uh, open system focus, uh, are they more interested in uh, internal focus or external focus? And this has to do with um, how much does the organization monitor and respond to changes in the external environment? That would be an open system focus. And they say that there's no <coughs> exact uh, correct or incorrect uh, um, um, dimension. Like you can't say that it's more important to be job oriented or organization oriented. But this is more what is the organization, what it is. So you find out how the organization um, <coughs> exists. And then uh, some are more. Uh, conducive to supporting projects, and others organizations are less conducive to supporting projects. So, how do you find out? How do you find out what are the cultural characteristics of an organization? You can look at their physical characteristics of the organization, like 
How do you, uh, the, how are the offices arranged? Are you in an open plan uh, where you uh, share information with people, or do you have like private offices? And um, uh, what is what do you read about the organization? Like, what do they say they are? What is their values and missions and goals? And uh, how do they think? Are we a we're an innovative company, and we really like to try new things and risk everything and go for something that's unique and innovative. So that might be characteristic of the organization. Uh, you can ask how uh, people interact with the organization. Uh, in the, within the organization, they, do they have um, meetings where they discuss uh, the allocation of resources? Or is it a well-defined thing? Is there like a strict hierarchy in place? Uh, what are the stories? in the organization, like people say, how is it good communication environment? Is it not a good communication environment? So this gives you some ideas of what um, uh, what, it, what it's like for the people that work there. So uh, the book describes each of these uh, areas. And you could like study a specific organization and take notes about uh, these characteristics, the physical characteristics. Uh, the what the company says about themselves, the vision statements, uh, the behavior, which is the uh, types of meetings that they have, the, the decision making style, the communication patterns, and then the stories that people tell. Is there somebody who's a hero because they worked until 7 p.m. to get done with a project, or? Um, are they a uh, villain because they went and worked for another company after being with this company so long? Things like that. And so the project manager has to um, interact with the culture and the subcultures of the organization. And uh, maybe that um, it's in some cases, they might have to create a different subculture for their project group. Then, if it if the overall culture of the organization isn't supportive of their project, so the, you might have a um, um, a overall culture for the company that is against uh, sharing resources, against um, um, uh, having other managers tell them what to do and so forth, and in that case, the project. A uh, manager might need to have a dedicated team, for example, to just create an environment which will allow them to create a different subculture for their project team. So there's also there's interacting with the project clients or customer organizations. So there may just uh, not just be the group itself, but it may be also the interaction with the customers. And you have to interact with other organizations that are related to the project. So there's a lot of uh, interacting of different types of cultures. The, the customer organization, if it's an organization, not individual customers, might be a different culture from your organization. And the um, other, uh, maybe supplier organizations, might still be another culture from your organization. So each of the organizations involved might have different cultures. And I thought what we could do is um, we could look at uh, exercise number five on page 91. Of course, it might be page 89 or 90 in the edition five. Uh, but on, in edition six, it's on page 91, number, question number five. So this one says, um, <coughs> the culture dimensions listed in figure three, five which is uh, this figure. Uh, <coughs> uh, use these um, on the, to assess your school. So instead of employees, consider students. Instead of management, consider faculty. Uh, for example, fa uh, members identify uh, <coughs> refers to the degree and uh, to which students identify with their school as a whole rather than with their major or option. So um, if in the first one, men members' identity. If you associate with your major, that's the job. 
if you associate with the school as a whole, that's the organization in this case. So you're just making adjustments. So the, uh, the project uh, is your education. And um, yeah, so you're looking at the what is the culture of the school. And um, so either it has individuals or small groups rate the culture of your school on the 10 uh, dimensions. So what dimensions are easy to evaluate and which ones are not easy? And how strong is the culture of your school? And what functions of the, of the does the culture serve for your school? And uh, do you think the culture of your school is best suited to maximizing uh, learning? Why or why not? So what kind of projects would be easy to implement in your school? And what kind of projects would be difficult given the structure and culture of your school? So the first thing is to kind of, I put these things in here, because then it could give you some basis as to choosing. Uh, if you think of your member identity as um, your, your major, for example, or if you think of it as the whole school, uh, you might put yourself in some category. So like this C is in between. Uh, but if you think of it more strongly towards the school or towards the um, major, then you would pick A, B, or C. So for each of these, um, these elements, we could, we could pick A, B, C, or D, or E, just to get an idea where we would put them on the chart. Okay. So I just want to write down the, the 10 uh, different areas. So we have one is member. Two is uh, team emphasis.
Okay, so how do you, when you speak to someone outside of the college, uh, how do you identify yourself? Do you identify yourself uh, with your major, or do you identify yourself with the, with the college? So which uh, area would you pick? A, B, C, D, E. Hmm? A. A? OK. Anyone else? Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> do you want A or do you want something else? A or something yeah, else? I agree with A. A, okay. So we got three A's, so we'll, let's say it's A. <laughs> um, okay, team emphasis. And we probably should go back. So the degree to which uh, work activities are organized around groups rather than individuals. How much is there a team emphasis? How would you classify it? A, B, C, D. I would say A for individual. Because mm, in the end, did you get an individual grade? Or yeah. yeah. Okay. A. Um, uh, management focus the degree to which management decisions take into account the effect of outcomes on people within the organization. So the management being faculty and um, the people in the organization being students. So what does the management decisions take into account the effect on people in the organization? Can we have something from this side of the room? <laughs> How would you categorize that? A, B, C, D, E. <laughs> well, <coughs> From your perspective, how would you think that um, the um, uh, the management is uh, is it people oriented or is it task oriented? The management is the faculty within Molde College. Are they more people oriented or f task oriented? But like in which uh, area here? How would you place it? So if they're task oriented, they're only focusing on the task and not on the people at all. And if they're people oriented, they're only focusing on the people and not the task. Okay. But maybe you're leaning towards task oriented. So we'll say B, for example. Okay. Uh, unit integration, <coughs> it's the degree to which the unit and the organization are encouraged to operate in a coordinated and interdependent manner. Um, I think this would mean like, uh, uh, say the courses within the organization, how do they work together? Are they meant to, to work together? So if you're taking this course and you're taking another course, in the work in the program, do they are they encouraged to operate and coordinate? Yes. Are they? I would say. Okay. Like So like when they schedule the final exams, they don't schedule the ones on the exams on the same day for people in the same program. So there is some consideration for integration of the of the course. Okay. But where so where would you put this on this scale? I would say Independent or interdependent? No, I would say yeah, D though. D. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. And then control, the degree to which rules, policies, and direct supervision are used to oversee and control employee behavior. So how much are rules and policies used to oversee student behavior? Uh, D is tight control. Okay. <coughs> Risk tolerance. Uh, the degree to which employees are encouraged to aggressive, innovative, and risk-seeking. So are you encouraged to be risk-seeking? <laughs> You know, risk <laughs> Okay. Um, so low, low risk uh, tolerance. Should we say B? <laughs> okay. Reward criteria. Uh, the degree to which um, promotion and salary increases are allocated to for to employees' performance rather than uh, sense than favoritism. Okay. So. Your rewards are your grades, and your grades are based on your performance. So I would say it's pretty performance oriented. Mm, that would be A. <coughs> uh, conflict tolerance, the degree to which employees are encouraged to air conflicts and criticisms openly. OK, so how would you rate that? A, B, C, D, uh, low or high? <laughs> Middle, anyone? <coughs> Can you air conflicts if you have conflicts with the school? You can't? <laughs> Can you say what you don't like? Come on, give me a letter. A, B, C, D, E. Yeah. E. E. OK. <laughs> Um, means and orientation, uh, the degree to which management focuses on the outcome rather than the techniques and process to achieve those results. So <coughs> the management being the school wants to see students graduate from the school. And do we just focus on the grad getting people out or do we focus on the way to get people out? So what, uh, what do we focus on more, the means or the ends, or somewhere in between? Hmm? B? OK. And then open system, uh, the degree to which the organization monitors and responds to changes in the <coughs> external environment. So uh, if the. If the government says you have to, uh, um, I don't know, apply by a certain date, and we change the system because you have to apply by this date, um, then that's, that's one thing. That's a regulation, but other types of environmental factors. If the, um, there's a big demand for jobs, do we change anything in terms of the programs that are offered or things like that. This is hard to answer, but I just put C because it's I'm really not so sure about this one. OK, so we have a, a range of things. We have um, a peer. We have something like A's and B's. Over here, we have some D's, and then we have A's 
and B's and we have an E here and a C in the middle here. So it's going to be, maybe I should try to do it. Um, So we have A. Okay, just to get an idea where we are. And then um, uh, what this shows is I've kind of overlaid it with the, another image that's in the book. And this image is on page 87. It's figure 3-7. And it shows the cultural dimensions of organizations that support are supportive of project management. And they did some study that looked at the range in which is more conducive to new project management projects, like to, to, to support project management. And uh, so this is kind of in the area of, um, of C to E, and this is C to E, and this is um, like in the C range, C and D. So this would be this area. And yeah, hmm? and then this one would be like this area, and this would be C and D, and um, this would be this uh, this area, and then there would be. I think this is one, two, three, four, five. Um, control is kind of B and C. No, that's B and C. And then uh, B and C, and then six is this area. And then seven, so it's six and then seven. Seven is this area, and then eight is this area. Nine is kind of in the middle, mm, B and C, and then this one is C. This one. So we have some overlapping here, maybe a little bit here. <coughs> so you can see that <coughs> this kind of organization for the, the, the academic, the, the, the school, is not really that uh, supportive of projects management. So if we have any projects, there's some things that overlap, uh, maybe like this one and this one this one, uh, this one, this one. So five out of the 10 areas seem to overlap and five don't. So it's not really that conducive to project management. Um, in that case, if you have something like this, it might be uh, better off to have a dedicated project or to um, um, to have to have a dedicated project team, or <coughs> to have a temporary team, uh, which is dedicated project team to that project, or to create a, like a subculture that would be used to addressing the project, and then um, having um, then the, the the project would be disbanded when it's finished. And then, the, the, because you cannot change the whole organization's culture, so and then you have a subculture that is more conducive to the project. So that might be the solution for that case. 
Um, there's one other thing, and it's, it's since you don't have, uh, if you don't have version 6, you will not be able to read this, but there's a case at the end of the chapter, and it's called Moss and McAdams Accounting Firm. And um, if you could read this case, uh, you should be able to, t to identify what type of um, uh, st organizational structure they're using in this case. And if you can identify the kind of organizational structure they're using, and what are the advantages and disadvantages of that organizational structure. Uh, so that would be the kind of question that I would be interested in. It's on page, um, it's on pages 94 to 96 of chapter 3. And it's the case study called Moss and McAdams Accounting Firm. And I don't think it's in the version 5 of the book, so um, I can't put it up on the web. Uh, so uh, you need to maybe get a hold of it and read it. Or if you read some of the other case studies in the books that you have available, then you can <coughs> ask yourself the same question. Can you identify what type, type of structure they're using? What are the advantages and disadvantages for that company for using that kind of organizational structure? Okay. So it's, and then uh, what else could they do? You could think about as as well. If it's if you think it's they're at a disadvantage for using that structure, what else would be the solution for them? Okay. So that's all I have. I I took out the. Um, the slides that were at the end of this chapter before, because from version three, they're no longer in the book. And there's no point in pointing to them, because I don't have access to this book that's version three. So I've completely removed those examples from the slides. OK. Is there any more questions? Because if not, then I'm finished for today with the lecture. Mm? OK, then uh, I think we're done.